Today we're talking about creatine. It's the most tried, true, tested, studied, researched, anything else you want to throw at it supplement that exists on the market, specifically creatine monohydrate. So before we get into creatine, I want to tell you a quick little story that goes all the way back to ninth grade PE class, which was my personal first encounter with the white powdery substance that you won't get in trouble for when you take it on an airplane. So creatine, was presented as if it was some kind of a steroid. Everybody was so sketched out about it. Somebody had brought this little tub that they got from GNC of creatine monohydrate and they had it in their locker. I don't remember the guy's name, but I remember he had this little thing of creatine there and everybody was like, oh my gosh, what has this guy brought into our world? What has he brought into PE class? Is he about to turn into Bane? Is he about to turn into the Incredible Hulk? What's gonna happen with this guy taking creatine? What if his mom finds out? What if he offers me some? What do I do? And so I remember one day, and this was the first time that I ever got on the creatine, he offered a scoop. He's like, hey man, you should try this before your workout. And so little ninth grade Mark said, all right, I'm gonna give this a shot. So I just threw the creatine into my mouth, unflavored, went to the sink outside the locker room, choked down some water and my life was forever changed. Not really. <laughs> it, took, it, it took a while before working out really became a thing personally in my life. Um, but anyway, I'm sure that we've all had some kind of an encounter with the myths around creatine and things that it does or doesn't do. Uh, but let's start thinking about some things that it actually will do when you start taking it. The first thing I want to talk about is a study that was done on college-aged individuals, both males and females, who are average. They're not uh, serious weightlifters, they're not high-level athletes, and they're also not people who are in really, really bad shape. They're just average people. And so what they did was they started supplementing creatine with these people. They also had another group that was placebo. Didn't have them change anything with their diet, and didn't have them change anything with their workouts. They're just doing very basic exercises. So these students who are part of this study there was one thing that was common to all those that were taking creatine, their body weight went up. All of them shot up. These people were doing a creatine loading phase, which is 25 grams per day for an entire week. So that's a lot of creatine to take in at once. Because one of the things that happens when you start taking creatine, it draws water into your cells, specifically your muscle cells. And that added water getting drawn in causes fluid retention and fluid has weight. So lo and behold, the body weight goes up. So when people say that creatine makes you gain weight, it's true. Creatine can make your water weight go up and often does. Now when you go from the loading phase to the maintenance phase, generally that's gonna start to taper off and you're gonna go back to normal. And for most people who are doing a maintenance phase of creatine, about three to five grams of creatine per day ingested orally is really all you need. So does creatine actually help you build muscle or make you get stronger? Yes. Yes on both, but it's not direct because of the substance itself. It's not like I can change nothing in my life, just stay at home all day, not go to the gym, not work out, but because I'm taking creatine, I'm gonna get stronger. That's not how it works. You see, the cool thing about creatine is it works on the ATP, PC, or CP system, which is just creatine phosphate. And so ATP is your body's immediately available energy for intense bouts of effort. Imagine that you're gonna go sprinting, lift a heavy weight, do a set, something like that. The energy that you're using is that ATP CP pathway or PC pathway, just different people look at it different ways. Uh, but regardless, it's still the same energy pathway. So when you're training harder with this immediately available energy store being increased, you're gonna be able to add more progressive overload, which we've talked about in other videos. So that could be the volume, the intensity, you name it, of your training is going up. And as a result, your physiological response to those stresses also goes up, which turns into increases in lean body mass, strength, and overall performance, which has been confirmed in other research that was done specifically with uh, knee, knee extensors. So an aquatic extension machine, there were groups of people, again, you split off into the placebo group and a group that loaded creatine. And the group that was loading creatine following the same resistance training protocols had statistically significant increases in the amount of strength they were able to generate with their quads doing those knee extension, uh, leg extension machines. So we call it knee extension, or as you can also have knee flexion, which is a hamstring curl, but we're thinking quad extensions, because that's, 
I don't know, they use that a lot in uh, physiology labs for measuring strength from performance athletes all the way to old people. I had to do a little more research to tell you why exactly they do that. And they don't measure something more complicated like a barbell squat, although just postulating off the top of my head, it might be because something like a machine doesn't involve technique and technique could be a threat to the validity of the research because, oh, maybe somebody's strength went up just because of the technique improvements. But rabbit holes and ranting aside, those are two things that you can really think of and expect to see when you start taking in creatine. And so for most people, loading phase isn't really necessary. You could just go to a three to five gram dose every day and just carry on with that. Um, you don't ever have to come off of it. It's one of those things that you can just add to your life and keep it there. Um, there's different types of meats that have creatine in them. Um, it, the molecule itself was first isolated in fox meat of all things. So I know you're not gonna find a lot of fox meat when you go to uh, HEB or Whole Foods or wherever you get your groceries from. Uh, but most of us, we can just go online and order a tub of creatine the old fashioned way. So yeah, again, things you can expect, you'll have in increased ability to sustain intense effort, slightly shorter recovery times between sets to hit the same amount of relative effort. And if you're new to taking creatine, expect to have some fluid retention and a little bit of bloating and weight gain as a result of those first few weeks. But over time, that will level off and start to normalize in your body. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, or if you even kind of enjoyed it, make sure that you hit the like button, uh, leave a comment below uh, about things you might, other things you might wanna know about creatine. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It's just a, the coolest thing you've ever seen that says subscriber count continue to grow. So until next time, have a great day and may the creatine be with you.